toll the online world is taking on kids' self-esteem. The documentary uses personal narratives to detail how some intrepid teens are trying to reshape their generation's relationship with technology. Joining us now is Emma Lemke. She's a digital wellness youth activist featured in the documentary. Emma, welcome. Great to have you with us. So let's start from the beginning. How old were you when you first started using the internet and social media? I was around the age of 13. I was in the eighth grade, or I was sorry, I was in the sixth grade, but surprisingly, I was actually the last in my friend group to get social media, beginning with Instagram and gradually progressing to get Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, and, and the rest of the really popular apps that dominate my generation. How do you think being connected and, and, and using all of these platforms impacted your self-esteem? Well, I'm already someone who is predisposed to having struggles with mental health, specifically having a generalized anxiety disorder and OCD, and just being a young female, navigating my sense of self and going through this incredibly import, important developmental period in my life. I, I really entered these apps not really understanding the toll that they could take on my mental health. I entered these apps feeling pressured as a member of my generation, um, but I didn't understand that these algorithms in place are meant to keep me addicted, meant to take my attention, to make money instead of prioritizing my mental health. So I entered these apps and left feeling more anxious, spending five to six hours a day, feeling more depressed and really having a corrosive sense of self, specifically about my own body as a young female. And and these are all things that worked and are still at work um, and, and take years to unpack. But again, teens are not really told that those are the possible harms when they enter these apps. So you experience these negative kind of impacts on your mental health. And you, I didn't really understand what was happening. And it caused great issues down the line that I know a lot of teens experience. So how did you go from someone that was having such a toxic experience with social media to where you are now being a uh, social media wellness activist. Tell us about that journey. Mm -hmm. So it really took getting to a breaking point. Um, I remember in the ninth grade, I heard the buzz of my phone. I had the Pallovian response to kind of grab it. And I'm someone who really values control. And I thought to myself, how am I allowing these apps to really have this control over me? I'm staying on them. I feel more depressed. I feel more anxious. What is happening? And I began researching. And I quickly began to see these studies that showed the correlation between increased rates of anxiety, depression, anxiety, suicide rates skyrocketing, and also the increased usage of addictive algorithms rhythms, kids feeling this pull and this need to be on these apps. And I thought, okay, well, the genie's been let out of the bottle. I'm part of a generation where DNA, uh, the DNA of our generation really has to do with being on social media, having these online personas. How do we amplify its benefits, its connective capabilities while mitigating its harms and, and really protecting other generations from having stories like these um, and like my own, where I really felt as though I was harmed for a while. Um, so that really rocketed me into the world of digital well-being. And that's where I came up with the idea for creating a space and an epicenter where teens could have these conversations, discuss the multifaceted nature of social media, and promote the healthier usage of it. And that's the log off movement. Emma, what does what Generation Z, your generation, understand about social media and the internet that other generations might not? I think it really is that techno-optimistic approach. It's saying, you know, the genie is out of the bottle. Social media is something that we're going to live with. But how can we really move forward and amplify those connective benefits? You know, how can we listen to these stories of connection and, and of self-expression that are really housed in these online platforms while also understanding and hearing these experiences of teens like myself where we were harmed, we feel as though we were more anxious? And how do we take those two narratives and really make sense of them? How do we amplify the benefits of social media while mitigating its harms? And really, I, I see that being played out through Generation Z, through youth storytelling, um, really having these important conversations, opening these channels of dialogue to be able to take that techno-optimistic approach of let's have social media, let's allow it to be a tool, but first we have to understand how we can really mitigate those harms and, and not allow it to really use us. We need to begin to use the technology again. Yeah, it's a problem we're really just beginning to understand. It certainly now. is. Yeah. Well, uh, Emma, you are certainly a very uh, impressive and articulate young lady, insightful about this uh, social media problem that we that teens are facing. Thank you so much. I, I really am 
always so excited to speak with other teens about this because I know it's not just me. There are so many stories out there that are not told. And that's really the point of log off is, and technically politics and all of my digital well-being work is to provide that platform for teens to come explore their own stories with tech usage and to really explore again ways to, to find those benefits and to begin to use social media in a more beneficial way. Keep up the good and important work. Emma Lemke, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, you can stream Are the Kids All Right? The Internet, live on the CBS News app this Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. So we're going to take a quick break, but this is a good time for you to download our free CBS News app if you haven't already. Up next, more of the day's top stories with Alice Gaynor. This is CBS News, always on. CBS News Sunday morning with Jane Pauley on CBS.